The NBA will resume tomorrow. The League and Players Association issued a joint statement saying they will, quote, work to establish a social justice coalition, work with local officials to convert NBA-owned facilities into voting locations for 2020, and work with players and network partners to include advertisements that raise awareness of elections and social justice. I know it's Friday, but it sort of seems like Wednesday was a long time ago. So let's sort of recap what happened when the NBA season stopped Wednesday. There were three games on the docket. The Bucks, they didn't take the floor. They were supposed to face the Magic. Milwaukee's won three straight after dropping game one. We had a huge game five planned between the Rockets and Thunder. They're tied at two all after consecutive OKC wins. Houston's Russell Westbrook yet to make an appearance dealing with that quad injury, but we did talk to Adrian Wojnarowski earlier. He says he expects and most people expect that he will play in game five and the Lakers were looking to finish off the Trailblazers. LA drops game one, but has come back with a vengeance to take a 3-1 lead. Dame Lillard left the bubble to have his knee examined and as of now his status is unknown for game four as we bring back in our reporter from the Orlando Orlando bubble Malika Andrews and Malika as we just mentioned Matt did the NBA and the Players Association releasing that joint statement about their plans to move forward what was the biggest takeaway from that for you the biggest takeaway for me, Elle, was the emphasis on voting. Because remember, when the Milwaukee Bucks elected not to play on Wednesday, the last st this last sentence of their statement was remember to vote on November 3rd. And in the statement that the MBPA and the NBA just put out, they placed an emphasis, like Matt mentioned, on voting, on one, turning arenas into voting stations. And if the deadline has already passed for when uh, registered voting stations need to be accounted for, then you using those arenas for other things. Now, the Milwaukee Bucks have actually already done that with Pfizer Forum. The Houston Rockets did it yesterday. A handful of teams had already converted those arenas. But remember, L, one of the things in that statement was also that they want to make sure that people who are at a high risk for COVID are able to vote safely. And black and brown people are disproportionately being affected and dying of COVID in this country. So their access to vote could potentially be put disproportionately in jeopardy. So the fact that the NBA, a majority black league, is taking that action is a big step. Now that the NBA and MBPA have put out that statement, Chris Paul, the, the uh, president of the MBPA, is expected to speak here shortly. Our Mark Spears is actually there, and I expect he will have more reporting on that to come. Right, An interesting development there too, Malika, because Chris Paul was really the one that was imploring, at least reportedly in that call a couple of days ago, more NBA players to actually register to vote because it looked like only about 20% yeah. of them had that were involved in that meeting, which was shocking to me. Now, I know you broke the news with regards to NBA employees across the league departments walking out today in solidarity with the NBA and the WNBA players who are pushing for social justice, and you have an update on that. So what more can you tell us about that specific thing, Malika? Yeah, this morning the NBA had accounted for about 100 employees that were mostly virtually striking by not coming into work in uh, New York and New Jersey-based NBA employees. That number is now up to 280 people, a source told me. And they are spending today calling elected officials, asking for police reform, for change and trying to find out more about what they can do. The plan is for this afternoon for those employees to convene virtually in a meeting and come up with a list of what they would like to continue to see from the NBA. And their hope is that they can present that to Adam Silver, Mark Tatum and other league officials next week. But their thought behind this was, look, the players are doing their part, but they said in a letter to Adam Silver that it should not be the sole responsibility of the black people, the black players that are hurting to be the voices of this. We as allies, some black, some not, want to make sure we are speaking up and supporting them too. So even though Adam Silver and the MBPA have acknowledged this, are doing things like taking actionable items about voting, the employees are still on strike today because they want to figure out how best they can continue to amplify this on behalf of the players and of themselves. 